Hey guys, my name is Thomas. I'm the CEO of AppRadar and I will be hosting your next session. I'm just waiting a little bit uh, since more uh, guys will be joining uh, recently. So let's wait uh, just a couple of more seconds. I hope so far your Sunday has been great. Uh, I think the event uh, that Batuhan has been organizing, uh, organizing here seems to be really, really awesome. And also at this stage already a big congratulations actually to you guys because you're taking in the time on a Sunday to learn something from you, to learn something for your career, for your game development studio, for whatever you're working within the gaming industry. And so therefore, thumbs up that you're pulling in this time already on a Sunday. So great on this stage, but good. Uh, I would suggest that I'm going to share my screen with you guys and we are jumping into the presentation. I think you have to answer something in the Q&A uh, section. Um, if you could give me their feedback, that would be great. But I think generally speaking, it looks like everything is working. And so therefore, without any further ado, let me jump into the presentation. So what we're going to talk about uh, today is how to rank number one in app stores where we are going to check out marketing strategies that enable you reaching top positions in app store top charts. Before we jump into it, let me say a couple of words about myself. My name is Thomas Krybanek. I'm the CEO and co-founder of AppRadar, which is an app marketing solution. And probably some of you have probably already heard from my dialect uh, that I'm speaking a little bit like Arnold Schwarzenegger. The reason for this is because I'm from Austria and I'm based over here in Austria. Myself, I'm a born marketer who started with online marketing long before Google Ads were a thing. Uh, so this means I already put in a lot of time into the field of marketing stuff online. Uh, I fell in love with mobile technology, especially mobile apps and as well as mobile games. And as you can see here, I already have a broader track, a marketing track record where I have been taking through different marketing um, yeah, uh, campaigns and strategies. So for example, I've been managing an eight figure affiliate marketing platform. I've been running the most successful uh, Kickstarter campaign over here in the German speaking region in the year 2014. Uh, I have launched uh, an app to the, uh, to the App Store, which reached 1 million downloads within one month with zero spending on marketing, as well as uh, over here at our work at AppRadar, we have been awarded multiple times for our work in the field of app marketing that we're pulling over here at AppRadar. What we have on the agenda for today, uh, when talking about what do we need to do to smash the top charts? First of all, we need to talk about the baseline for success. The baseline for success contains the games, uh, contains uh, some must-haves around your game, as well as the understanding how the top charts actually work. We're going to talk about strategies for reaching number one, uh, which will include researching trends and how you can save money by doing so, launching with a big bang, then talking about user acquisition. So how can you actually get players? How can you get downloads where we're going to talk about organic strategies as well as about paid strategies? And last but not least, we're going to talk about cross promotion. And to finish my presentation, we are going to talk about um, how AppRadar can actually help you as well as your career, so to say. Good. Then let's talk about the baseline what your game needs to have before it is even before we can even talk about that it is able to uh, reach or hit the top charts so first of all your game should be of decent quality the reason why i'm putting here decent quality is your game should work in other words i'm not talking about that you need to have the fanciest 3d graphics and all this stuff which is not really needed to hit the top charts but it is important that your game is of decent quality, which means you have good graphics, the gameplay is working as well, the game itself is stable and doesn't crash, for example, when you uh, open it up. Make it easy for your players is one of the big ingredients that will help you reaching top positions within the top charts. When talking about making it easy, I'm talking about think of instant gameplay, which means people are downloading your game because they want to play it. 
So don't overwhelm them with any login or registration or something like that. Let them play your game. The more minimalistic your game is, or in other words, the more easy to understand your game is, actually this also means the audience of your game is getting wider and broader, which means that more people have the capability of playing your game. When talking about playing a game, I think one of the most important things is that the game should be fun, especially when for people who are not hardcore gamers, which also means uh, one of the things that we're seeing very, very often in this regards is that game developers tend to themselves to play their games, testing it all the time. And in the end, they end up making a super hard to play game for everybody who has not developing it and didn't spend that much time with it. So therefore make it fun, make it beatable, so to say. Your game, uh, what we have seen is a good uh, way um, to for monetization to base it on rewarded ads. This means that your players get something for watching an ad compared to what I would highly recommend to try to avoid as good as possible, remove hard payment wars, where it, where it really says that players need to pay something, they need to buy something within your game that they can actually play it. So for example, they need to play levers or something like that. Try to avoid this as good as possible. You want to get your players to play your game. And when talking about uh, um, also a must have for success, uh, one of the things that is very important to highlight, highlight here is also the timing is super important. First of all, timing on trending topics, where we're also going to talk a little bit more in detail within the research session, but also having timing in the back of your head in market movements. Because one of the things that we have seen, uh, one of the, I would say, big downs, uh, upsides of the big downside of the corona uh, situation that we had over here is that the stay at home lifestyle has boosted game downloads as well as play sessions, I would say, all around the world. Good, so now we have been talking about what your game needs to have some kind as a baseline. Now let's talk about how do top charts actually work. First of all, we have to figure out or talk about that top charts are split up into different subcategories. The two main categories that we have there are apps and games and each of them has also different subcategories. So for apps, for example, it can be entertainment, social, or health. For games, on the other hand, it can be, for example, casual, action, strategy, as well as other subcategories. Overall, there are categories which are the so-called top free uh, games and top free apps, or top paid games and top paid apps. This means this is really overall throughout all categories, the best performing games and apps within the App Store. Now you might ask yourself, okay, uh, there are different categories and how do I actually rank for those categories? Who is number one, who is number two and who is number three and why are they on position number one, two, three? So it is very important at this stage to understand that the top charts itself only, or say, let's say 90% base their algorithm on downloads. This means when you look into the top charts, the chance that when you see a game on position number one, uh, the chance that it means that this game is getting currently the most downloads is very high. When I'm talking about the most downloads, it is also very important that we're talking about analyzing different averages of downloads that you get on a daily basis, which is then being added up for a, for a wider time span. In other words, what this means is the app stores are analyzing the average daily downloads in a period of three to five days, and the game with the most downloads within this time span will be leading its category. The game with the second most on position number two, the game with the third most on position number three, and so on and so on and so on. But I think you get the idea here. So in the end, long story short, it is about downloads. And also what is super important when talking about top charts, they are unique per country. In other words, every country has their own top charts. Why is this important? This is important because also every country has its kind of unique situation in the market. 
which means there are a different amount of people living in the country. So for example, if you compare Austria, which is only a small country with 8 million inhabitants, for example, to Germany, which has 80 million inhabitants, which is the factor of 10, which also means that uh, you, to reach a top position in Germany, you need actually more daily downloads compared to reaching it in Austria. As you can see here on this list, uh, which you can also check it out uh, later in more detail, or probably already made some screenshots of it, uh, you can see an estimate of how many daily downloads do you need to enter into the top three, top 10 uh, category for casual games. We are looking at numbers uh, which were kind of up to date in April 2021. So they are super up to date, uh, in other words. And what you can see here, for example, is to enter the top 10 in the United States, you will need around 17,000 downloads per day for three to five days in a row. And then you will be having a top 10 position within the category of casual games within the United States. As you can see, I brought also some other numbers here for other markets as well. Good, that we now figured out what we need on the game side. We figured out how do the tap, uh, how do the top charts actually work and how do I get ranked there and where we learned that it, in the end it is about downloads. Now we're going to talk about where do we get those downloads from. To get these downloads from, here is the pro tip number one. Try to use various marketing channels and combine them. It is not about finding this one hacky marketing channel that nobody else hasn't uh, has found yet and you are the first one tapping into it, maybe finding a glitch into the App Store itself or something like that. These tactics may have been possible, I would say, five to probably 10 years ago. But believe me, guys, nowadays there is no quick wins or anything like that. It is about executing a marketing strategy with the goal of getting downloads to enter the top charts and also to stay there. As mentioned, the smarter you can combine those different marketing channels, the less money you will need to pay and the better the results will be. On the right hand, right hand side, you see the current, uh, you see the different marketing channels that we're going to have a closer look at within this session. Please be aware that there are also other channels out there, obviously, but since we also have some kind of time limit there, uh, I'm taking out here of the uh, some of the bigger ones. Let's start with research. Why is research so important when we're talking about pushing a game into the top charts? You want to identify trends that are currently going on in the market. You want to identify what people are currently playing, which kind of games, which kind of themes, which kind of mechanics, what is currently trending within the App Store. This is very, very, very important. You can use a tool like AppRadar to check out different top charts for different categories as well as different countries. And you can also see how they developed over time. And you can also check out within AppRadar how many downloads are specific games getting. What you then want to do after identifying, first of all, getting a big overview of what are the current trends that are currently going on within the top charts. And once again, this really means checking out different games that are going on there, download them, play them and see why they are so catchy and why they are there within the top charts. Try to reverse reverse engineer this a little bit because then you can also use AppRadar to analyze App Store search volume of certain keywords to estimate the target audience size or also the hype for specific keywords that are currently being searched for within the App Store. Here the long story short is you want to be found for keywords that are currently being searched for within the app stores. You want to rank on good positions over there because this means that a lot of people are currently searching for a game like yours or for a theme that your game is based on and where you can get a lot of organic downloads which you don't have to pay for. You're simply optimizing for what people are searching for. As you can see here, I brought some examples with me what this can mean. Uh, one thing, for example, can be that you do a, a research of top movies for 2021, 
for kids, for example, and then you will figure out that obviously uh, Elsa and Anna games, uh, so coming from the Frozen universe, are uh, super trending within the app stores. So this might be a good idea or might be a good inspiration also for you to base your game theme on trending keywords and then also optimize your store listing for those keywords that you're actually also being found for the specific keywords. When talking about after researching your game, so we have figured out what kind of theme do we want to base our game on, what are kind of the main keywords that are currently trending, where we do we want to base our game on. It is about launching the game, so bringing it into the App Store. One of the things that is uh, very common when launching games is that you do a soft launch. This means that you test your game in one, two, three, maximum three countries, I would say, uh, release it there and you do the analytics. You want to figure out, is the game stable? Do people like it? You can figure this out by having a closer look at the day one, day seven and day 30 retention rate. So are people coming back? Is there something? Does your game have something that really keeps the fun high for people that are coming back? Then you want to create a store listing that converts visitors into downloads. This is also super important because we are talking about that you will be running, oh, sorry. We are talking about that you will be running different marketing campaigns that will be driving traffic to your store listing and you want to convert this traffic into actually downloads. So this means it needs to be top notch when it comes to optimizing for the metadata as well as to optimizing of the creatives. You can also use your community to drive initial momentum. So this means if you build up a community on Facebook, for example, a Facebook group, or you have somewhere else a community, promote your game there and bring some initial momentum going uh, once you do the full launch of your game. And once again, also when talking about launching a game, timing is everything. You really don't want to launch on the same day where a triple A game gets released because there you can be sure that on this same day, a lot of people will be downloading and playing this triple A game, which means that there are less people will be looking forward for finding other new games because they have already been waiting very long to play this new game. And also once again, um, uh, a trend here that we can also see that there have been two times more casual game installs in March 2021 compared to December 2020. So there is also seasonality for specific genres in place. When talking about launching with a big bang, just putting your app into the app store will not bring you this big bang. That is also the harsh truth how it is because you put it there, you will get eventually a handful of organic downloads, but that's it. So therefore, to launch with the Big Bang, you also have to think about cooperations with influencers. So this can include casual influencer marketing campaigns where you can use uh, platforms like Famebit or Upfluence and line up various influencers that will help you promoting your game once you launch. Very important here, do your research. Those influencers should really be um, also having a, um, a following of people who are actually players. Um, and you should not put your hope all into one influencer. And so therefore it is important that you also spread the risk and work together with multiple influencers when launching your game. A pro tip, uh, however, can be that you find an influencer that collaborates with you. This can mean that you on the one hand even develop a game for them, or on the other hand, you incorporate them as a character in your game. This will simply also put it higher or this will make it more uh, tangible for them if they then promote it because then they're also promoting themselves. And in the end, that's what influencers like to do the most. When talking about other marketing tactics that you need, we're talking about user organic user acquisition. Why is it important? Because you want to convert the App Store traffic. This means people that are in the App Store searching for specific keywords. You want that you are being found on those specific keywords and those people are downloading your games. That they do this, it is also important uh, that you have a good conversion rate, which once again leads to that the creatives of your game need to be really rock solid, that you can convert the people and that they download your game. And also very important, uh, organic user acquisition will be super important when it comes to the topic staying in the top charts and not only getting there. 
So how do you do it now? Well, take your findings from the research and execute it on it by using those keywords in your store listing. Localize your store listing, which will be, I think, the next follow-up session after this one, where this will go into more detail, as well as incorporate a gameplay video, especially if you have a unique type of game which or a unique gameplay uh, create a video so that people understand what your game is about. Very important, do AP tests of your video and think of using your video already as part of the onboarding so that people already get the idea how to play the game without even playing the game. Because then once again, they will download it and easily understand how to play it. They will have fun and then they will play it even longer. And how you can ensure that your organic use acquisition is running on top performance, do analysis as well as optimization of your conversion rates within the app stores. That is also something that AppRadar can help you with. So next channel on the list is paid user acquisition. I'm just going through this very fast because uh, what, how is it separated here on this list? On the one hand side, we're differentiating between what is happening within the App Store. So we are talking about App Store advertising, which can uh, include the channels of Apple search ads, as well as Google app campaigns. But these are mainly ads that are happening within the App Store. So this means people are already within the App Store searching for something and there you want to be found. And on the other hand, you can also use social ads, for example, Facebook ads, TikTok, Snapchat, and many more like Reddit, for example, where you are trying to attract the players in a social network where they're currently scrolling through the feed and you want to uh, get their attention that they download your game. And the last tactic that I brought with me here is the topic of cross promotion. So this means when your game is live within the App Store and there is already some uh, kind of traction going on, use cross promotion to also bring in more of your existing player base and drive downloads for your new games. This will help you to save costs for acquiring new players, but be also realistic when it comes to the expected impact. What I mean by that is that there is obviously a big difference if you're just putting an interstitial ad or a static banner that says, hey, we have a new game and download it, compared to if you're creating an algorithm that tries to identify your biggest fans and then incentivizes them to download new, your new game by giving them some kind of benefit when they do it like this. And there is also a kind of a pro tip, uh, also another strategy which, which is a bit harder to pull off but can work out very, very well, is to work together with other creators, which can be other gaming studios, uh, which are not your direct competitors, but kind of uh, where you have a good relationship with them. It can be a collaboration once again with influencers, and it can be digital enhancement of online, oh, sorry, of offline world experiences. So here a lot of the topic of virtual reality and augmented reality comes into play. Good guys, I know this was now really a lot of uh, content within a short period of time. So therefore I brought some more slides with you where I can also dig deeper into this topic. So first of all, I would like to recommend you guys to make a screenshot of this site, to go and visit appradar.com slash App Store Optimization Academy and check out our academy over there. We have 43 free lessons that will help you building up a good basic understanding of how you can actually uh, get your games into the App Store and make a big bang with it. Next, what we're doing over here at AppRadar is on the one hand side, we have a tool that we developed and on the other hand side, we're doing consultancy for selected clients out there. Feel free to create a free account at AppRadar.com and analyze your games, analyze the visibility, analyze your app metrics, check out what your competitors are doing. Um, we are having different paid plans also that enable different features for you guys to get even more out of it. And on the other hand side, if you're looking for somebody who can help you, who can also put in some work for you, help you launching your games, feel also free to reach out to us. We are very happy to help you launching your games like we did it, for example, also with games for Rovio and Miniclip. And last but not least, uh, we are also hiring. So if you're uh, looking for a career in um, 
helping games out there actually succeed with their marketing activities, with their app marketing activities, check out our careers page. Uh, I'm, I would be happy if some of you guys uh, would sign up for any of the open positions that we're looking for. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm at the end of this session. Uh, once again, my name is Thomas Krubanek. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to add me there. Feel free to send me a message. I think we still have some time left. So therefore, I'm going to stop presenting my screen and check out uh, what we have here within the Q&A session. So good. Uh, so first of all, um, concerning uh, sharing the slides uh, of the presentation, guys, uh, I think the easiest would be if you add me on LinkedIn or on Twitter and just send me there a short message with Thomas, it would be great if you could be sending me over your uh, the presentation that you did. So I think this is really the, the easiest answer to this. Uh, I'm also going to share the presentation afterwards with Batuhan, who is organizing this event. So I'm also quite sure that he will be having some tips there or uh, also some idea how we'll be, he will be spreading the presentations. But as mentioned, Thomas Kribanek on LinkedIn, just add me there and I will be happy to send you the presentation. Good. Then there we have another good question of Kanzu, who was asking that some games are using misleading ads uh, of their games uh, to attract people and to kind of, I would call it, trick them into their games. I am quite sure that we all have seen those ads uh, on uh, Facebook where we see that the gameplay seems to be very challenging. Uh, very often it is something where you have uh, to help somebody escape from a room with a lot of danger or something like that. Uh, a gardenscape uh, has, been has been pushing this very, very much. Uh, then we're checking out the ads. We see the videos, think to ourselves, oh, that's awesome. I want to play this game. We download it to figure out it's completely something different than what we have seen within the ads. I have to say that this tactic was also very present. And I also have to say it was actually very uh, good performing. But uh, also there have been a recent a, a lot of regulations happening in this regard where also people were pushing and saying, hey, um, it is not allowed to do this uh, because it is misleading the user. And uh, that is something that we don't want to do. So therefore, I would uh, not recommend you guys doing this because as mentioned, there were regulations going into this topic. Um, but nevertheless, uh, what you can obviously for sure do is try to um, yeah, showcase your game in different ideas, in different um, kind of gameplay videos. But once again, it should be really matching the gameplay as well. But you can be adding some kind of filter uh, on top, for example, or some storyline on top. But it should be showing the actual gameplay. Good. Uh, then Sive has also made a good question. For a new game studio that is just starting to publish their first game, should their first goal be to become number one in a short time? No, Sibe, uh, when this is your first game that you're publishing it to the App Store, I would highly recommend that you get an understanding of the process of how it is to actually publishing games to the App Store. M familiarize yourself with it. There is some kind of playground going on that the App Stores are also defining for you. So it's not uh, where you have to play along. So therefore, if it's your first game, push it into the App Store, familiarize yourself with the process. Um, write down the learnings that you have try to identify uh, what you made good, be also realistic, trying to identify what didn't work that well, and then think of how you can make it better the next time. So therefore, really, if it's your first game, build up the knowledge. Once you have the knowledge, then we talk about reaching the top stars. Good. Um, so we have 30 more seconds left. Um... Dani san, uh, that is also a very interesting question. 20 more seconds left. Uh, considering the growth of large publishers in the market uh, with tools, expertise in marketing, and so on and so on, how can smaller teams with three to five people still achieve successful development and publishing hyper casual games on their own? Once again, it is about identifying trends. This is, I think, here really the, the most important uh, topic where you can also win. Good guys, I think that the time is now over here. Um, hopefully you could take something from uh, this presentation and I could give you some uh, ideas. As mentioned, we were not able to cover everything in depth. Uh, therefore, once again, check out our academy where you can learn more about uh, marketing your games as well as uh, feel free to add me on LinkedIn where you can also add me, send me your questions or you can also send me an email 
tk at apparator.com. I'm happy to help. And yeah, in this guy, in this uh, regards, guys, thank you very much for your time once again. Thank you very much for pulling in the time on a Sunday. This is really amazing. Have fun with the rest of the day and bye bye. Cheers. Thank you.